brick cladding is done. And I'm quite pleased with it. Episode 14, brick cladding. Here's how it came about. Row, 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 couple of rows, couple of rows, row, 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 couple of rows, row, 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 two rows, two rows, another row, 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 wall. You get the gist. I had to get the hang of building with lime. This is my first ever mix of lime water. Yeah. And it does behave a little bit differently than cement. If you want to loosen cement up a bit, you can throw on some water, knock it up, and then it's workable again. But with lime mortar, the advice is to get the water content right when you mix it and then leave it alone. So if you want it to become workable again, you can work it and it loosens up a little bit. And if you need yet more workability, you're supposed to put the water on the substrate, not in the mortar itself. And I think that's because if you do that, the lime and the sand have a tendency to separate. So controlling the amount of water on the substrate is quite important. Now, while I was trying to get the hang of using lime mortar, the British summer really threw everything it had at me. We had three of the hottest days on record, followed by driving rain, then some high wind, and then one nice day, and then some more driving rain. And that became a bit of an object lesson in how to control the water content in lime mortar. Because at a high temperature, I was having to submerge the bricks to keep them wet enough and cover up the finished work to stop it drying out too quickly. And then I had to build shelter to keep the bricks and the wall dry because if the bricks were holding water at a lower temperature, then I couldn't compensate by making the mix dry enough and still have that mix be workable. And then I had to tie that shelter down to stop it blowing away. The mix itself was made of three parts sharp sand to one part NHL 3.5 lime and enough water to get a good working consistency. I was starting with the sand so the lime doesn't stick to the drum and then uh, adding the lime and mixing the sand and lime dry before slowly and carefully adding in the water. You can give lime mortar a good long mix. I was leaving it for 15 or 20 minutes while I did other work and as it mixes it gets more creamy and more workable. So the reason for being quite cautious about adding the water is that something that looks too dry at the beginning of the mix will actually turn out to have the right consistency once it's got that creaminess. Because I was working on the other side of this wall, where there's very little space, but I was mixing on this side, I had to carry all of the mortar over the garden wall in buckets. So what with that and the weather, I didn't stop to video many things along the way. Episode 14, brick cladding. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. This is a party wall. Party! So I'm really putting up the fair face of it for my neighbours to look at. I had to make a party wall agreement with them. Party! To put it up, which I thought was complicated enough without making it out of something that neither they nor their surveyor had ever heard of. So rather than go with hempcrete and render, I've put up a single skin brick wall out of lime mortar and London brick. They've actually spelt it wrong here. It's London. L double A N, not L O N. Landon, bricks from Landon. Maybe they're dyslexic too. Here it is from the inside. We've got a single skin of bricks, and then a 75 mil gap, and then the timber frame. And here are the stainless steel ties connecting the brick to the timber. And that gap protects the timber from any moisture if there's driving rain against this wall. Where the new wall meets the wall of the house, here, it's stabilised with a stainless steel brick starter kit that ties the bricks in place. And down the other end, it's stabilised with a 650mm brick return. According to the hempcrete experts, this brick return isn't really necessary, because it's only a single storey high, and the brickwork is tied in with these stainless steel ties, and the hempcrete itself will bind the brickwork in place as well. In fact, a single skim of brick cladding like this on the outside of the hempcrete will work just fine. But putting a brick return on it is standard practice for building control and in this case I couldn't be bothered to argue because it's a tiny structure and I would have to have probably paid for a structural engineer's calculation to show that it wasn't necessary and that really isn't worth it on a structure this size. Doodle -doo, doodle -doo. 
is episode 14 brick cladding now you can't put hempcrete up against a condensing layer that is a cold surface which is vapor impermeable where condensation forms because that condensation will eventually rot the hemp but because I've used lime mortar every one of these mortar beds is vapor permeable so I can actually put the hempcrete right up against this wall if any moisture is making its way out of the building in this direction it's not going to get trapped here and form condensation and if any moisture makes it through in adverse weather conditions it'll breathe back out again so the hempcrete goes all the way from here to 270 mil out here and that makes up the thermal performance of the wall so it matches the rest of the building that's about it for the old uh brick cladding. I'll talk a bit more about lime but I think I'll put that in a separate episode. Next I've got to sort out a floor, some electrics and some fancy brickwork on the front pillars and then I'm ready to go for the hempcrete. You put your left leg in, you move it in between. It's episode 14, brick cladding. Oh, I say, I say, I say, what do you call a man with two feet? Out of date, 61 centimetres mate. I'll be here all week. All year actually. <laughs>